Welcome. In this movie I will demonstrate how to use a, a powder diffraction tool in IRENA to display a powder diffraction or wide angle scattering data and how to <coughs> uh, quantify peak positions and, and, and plot them. So um, first let's start with Igor. I have Igor 8 here. I have installed IRENA. When IRENA is installed, you will have in a macros, you will have a command load IRENA says macros. When you do that, you will get a uh, says many uh, command or, or a, a many item in which you can um, in which you can select various functions of IRENA. Now, first thing we're gonna need to um, load the data in IRENA. Now I have I have put the data for you so you can follow on GitHub and if I can find my GitHub um, if you go to github.com you look for Jay Ilavsky or just type it in here there's a few depositories one of them is sex Igor code this is where Irina code uh, resides so this is where all the programming all the IRENA code is available to you also this is a place from which the installation is done now uh, I have put in here example Igor experiments folder if you look inside there there are various Igor experiments which you can then use to follow some of the other movies um, and there is this PT uh, wax PTAL 203 zip file that contains the um, that contains the data uh, which we will be using so you can download this ahead of time unzip it and then you can follow what I'm doing here uh, with these data because those are exactly the same data this is the Igor experiment from my previous attempt to um, make this movie and luckily I ended up with too high resolution and it didn't look good so I'm recording this as actually second time so the first step in here is to download the uh, the data in Igor. So um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to use in this case import ASCII wax or other data. That is an importer which is set up so it can install import data in IRENA which are not necessarily small angle scattering data like per distance distribution function, powder diffraction, whatever else. Now if you need help with this what you can do is you can uh, open up a panel and then just hit a get help button when you do that it will open my uh, manuals page in uh, in your web browser so here is a manuals page and as you can see it it opens up directly on the tool which you are using so you get a help with exactly the tool which you want to use so first thing is we are looking here for data to import them all of these panels generally follow from top to bottom so we start at the top select data path and <clears throat> I have put my all my example data on my computer in IRENA ASCII example data and here is the data set the WX WAX PTAL203 now inside there are this you don't have these PDF cards because I don't have a right to distribute JCPDS PDF cards or we can use them. I'm going to show you. These are X, Y, E data, which is X, which is in this case two data angle, Y, which is an intensity, and E, which is an error uncertainty. Just open that. If you have other types of data in there, you can just type in here X, Y, E, and that's going to mask off only the data sets which contain extension X, Y, E. You can click on any one of these files. If you hit test, Igor will go in and figure out how many columns it can recognize. And in this case, you can recognize three columns. If you want to know what is there, you just hit preview. When you hit preview, it will open up the file as a read only, so you cannot edit that, but you can read what is inside. And so there is a some information which comes out of how we measure the data. And eventually what you find out is there is a label here which says it's a two data intensity and error. So X is column one is X, that's a two data intensity error. If you want to see how it looks like, just hit plot and you can see that it plots the data for you. Uh, next step is we're going to tell the code that we actually have 
to data and intensity. If that's the case, it wants the wavelength. So, because it needs to know how to convert two data in a D spacing. So that is 0 0.5904, which is 21 kilectron volts, which is what we have used. The most reasonable way probably dealing with this is use file names as folder names that will basically use these, um, these texts here for the folder of our data. You have a few other choices in here which you can co do. You can scale import the data. You can remove intensity less than zero in case that's needed. You can trim the data, which means you can remove some smaller X values or larger X values. You can truncate the long names or at the front or at the end. Now, I'm using Igor 8. Igor 8 has a capability of using long file names. If you want to do that, you can go in here and in the latest version of Irina, if you go to config font names and you go in here, you can check this checkbox, which is use long names, and it is in Igor 8 and more. In that case, Igor will use up to 256 characters in a name. Good luck using that. But if you don't have that checked or you have an Igor 7, then there's a 32 character limit, which means some of your names of your files may be way too long. And in which case you either have to truncate front, truncate end, or you can do and remove part of the, part of the string. So let's say your name has a sample inside it, which is not very helpful because all of them have the sample. Like in here, all of them have a PTAL203. So you could principally go in and, for example, remove the PT underbar or something to make the name shorter. So you keep the important stuff. Down here, it is where the data are going to go. So in this case, this is new folder was going to be root, imported data, file name. We can, for example, change this into wax but that's not necessary, you can change it later. Now, this is using what is called QRS naming system. The QRS naming system uh, is, uh, is, is our, all of these three are QRS naming system. You don't really have other choice. Uh, if you have a two data as X, it actually, the name will start with T, so it will end up with a wave named T underbar and a file name. R is an intensity, S is uncertainty. So that's where the data will go. Now what we can do is we can select all of them. We can actually kill this, we don't need it. And then we just hit import. When you do that, Igor will eventually plot or print all of this information in here. So every time it imported data, it made a record. Down here in a command line, um, if you don't see it, uh, you can get it from here command window. Okay, that's this place here. And this this command window is actually this down here. This part is what's called history. So the history is it imported data from this file. It stored the data in a root wax and created this folder. And the new wave names are R, T2 data and uncertainty. And so you can see what happened here. So if you go and want to know what happened, you can read it back. With this, we can kill this, we don't need it anymore. And if you look inside Data Browser, if you don't see Data Browser, like it's closed, you can go in here and open it up from data. So that's a Data Browser. Inside here, you can see you see a full root folder. Inside there's a WAX folder. Inside the WAX folder, you can see all of these folders. Each one of them contains now the triplet of the waves. If you don't see it, just check this little checkbox and you can see it. If you click on it and have info, you will see that it has an information that's called, what's called wave note. That's where Irina makes lots of records. It's a text string and all of the notes from the original file are there. They're not very helpful to you, but they may be helpful for something else. And then it plots it down here. So that's a two theta and you can see it's a linear line. That's an intensity and it's an uncertainty. If now you want to see the data plotted, because it might be something which we want to first observe, go in here and pick a plotting tool. In a plotting tool, you can check the checkbox QRS. By the way, if you need to make it smaller or larger, you can scale it by dragging this corner around, and then we'll scale the content. So now it's QRS. If you check on this, you can now see and you can start adding data. Now, this may get a little bit complicated when you have too many data sets. So there's a scripting tool that you can pick on. 
open up a scripting tool, find the folder where you are, make sure you're looking on the right, Q, uh, right type of data, which is QRS, select all the data, and then you can run with reset plotting tool. This will simply reset the plotting tool to make sure nothing's in there and then just add all the data in there. And here are the data. Now the data are plotted by default as an intensity versus Q, which is not true in this case. You go in here and pick a style, how the graph is formatted as a two data and intensity. And you can see that what, that's what you get. Now, <clears throat> What I want to do is show you what, you know, explain to you what these data mean. So let me just zoom up in this area. What we did in this case, we had a little heater and we had uh, mixed together alpha alumina with a platinum powder. So you get two powders mixed together. We put them in a heater and then we were heating up and cooling down. And what we are doing is basically calibrating using thermal expansion. Uh, we're calibrating the heater. So what we can observe here are first there are various diffraction peaks. There's a one diffraction peak here and as a function of a, of a measurement, the peak position changes. Actually, it's going to go up and down in, in angle or uh, actually down and up in angle depending on temperature. Now what I want to do is I want to show you how are we going to identify which peaks are of interest for any given phase. And I'm going to show you how we extract a despacing as a function of basically a file name. At which point, the rest of that, and I'm going to show you what the data are. That is the end which the code can do. And then you have a graph of D versus name or temperature. And then you can do science out of that. So <clears throat> these are the data which we are looking at at this moment. I can just kill that, kill that, kill that back here and I'm going to make sure I'm going to save the experiment. Keep in mind once in a while you want to save the experiment just in case Igor crashes so you don't lose your work which you have done until then. Step number one is done. We have data. Step number two, we think we know what we are looking at. Step number three, let's get the tool which we want to use. Powder diffraction fitting or wax wide angle x-ray scattering. Here is the panel for that. Now up here, you want to select a QRS or QIS. That's still the same naming system. You want to make sure you're looking on the right folder. And then you simply double click here on the graph and you can see um, you can see the, uh, the data plotted here as a function of two data. Now, first thing is we want to identify what the, um, what the phases are. For that, we need to put this stick these stick lines uh, over the graph as it's common in powder diffraction. And that is done in this diffraction line tool. So you click in here and there are no JCPBS cards or AMS cards are not available because they are not there. We first can add them in there. Now I distribute some of the cards. So if you click on this export, import, delete, you now have a set of cards which I have one way or another generated, typically calculated from a uh, theoretical structure. So I can go in here and I can copy this one in and that one. Those are two aluminum oxides. And there's no platinum in here. I never distributed any. Oh, there's a platinum in here, but I don't think that's actually the right platinum. So with that one, we can close this. If you now check on this, you will see that you have now immediately identified lots of peaks. This is AL203 and this is another AL203. They look pretty similar. Those are just uh, different cards for a very similar material. However, if I now click on this platinum here, you can see, let me just change the color. If you right click on this, you can change the color. So now the corundum is going to be blue. This is now black and you can see that it is, does not match what it is. It might actually be a wrong thing. If you now have access to JCPDS, to the PDF4 uh, database, you can actually go there and export their data cards in XML format. That is a PDF4 plus XML cards. I have done that. And if you look at, when I look in here, there is a PDF card and I, I found this one to be a reasonable match for what we need. So if you just click on that and say open, it will come up. And what we can do is we can change the name to be saying platinum. And let me just make that shorter. 
Let's say continue. Now you can actually make those cards manually if you really want to. What you need is a despacing. Uh, it's helpful to have HKL, but you also have to have intensity. The other ones are actually optional, but you need a depositions and some ratios of intensities. Um, HKLs are nice if you have them. I'll show you why. But anyway, you can close this now and I can just click on that and you can see that now we have all the peaks. Now this is a slight shift in here. It could be either temperature or something else. I can make this uh, maybe green. And then we have a green and red. Notice that there's something else in there. There's some un unidentified peaks here in the backside, which I don't know what they, where they came from. But I, that's not actually this moment important. So what we want to do is also identify which peaks those are, because that may be helpful later. If you just click here and have the HKLs, this will basically show you what the HKLs are. It adds the tags to it. So you have a tag for first peak and second peak and so on. And so you can make them appear and disappear. So this is how you can uh, get the distributed cards. The distributed cards are this one. It's the export, import, delete. They are actually distributed with Irina. So you have those. Um, you can import your own PDF for XML cards. If you want to have them forever, what you do now is you go in, you have imported, the platinum was imported by me, you now go in, hit this one, select it in here, and then copy it out. And when you do it, it's going to get stored on your computer with Irina distribution, and it's going to stay there even through upgrades. Uh, you can also delete them if you don't like them. For example, I don't think this is the right one, so I can just delete that and remove it, and it's gone. Okay, um, you can also download American, um, uh, what is it, American Mineralogist something. And you can see if you put your mouse over it and leave it there for a longer time, you see the help. So that is a free database which you can use. Typically they have, um, they have typically minerals, so you can get minerals from there. Or you can manually add or edit the card, which means you can just basically create a table and type in the despacing. So now, let me just uncheck those. So now what I want to do is demonstrate to you how I get a fitting of some of these peaks. So let me just pick a few of these peaks in here and zoom. So now I have one, two, and three peaks. What I want to do is I want to select a range of data around the peaks. And I want to fit these three peaks as a function of the file name here. In my case, that's a temperature. To do that, I can go back here to peak fitting and start multi-peak fitting. When that is done, you can see it opens up here. Uh, it adds a um, panel, which is a panel from Igor Pro. That's an actual Igor tool which Wavematrix made and distribute and I just kind of slave it with me. And so I can click here and now I can hit auto locate peaks. Now that will, between the cursors, find the peak positions. What you have here is you have a differential. Here you have the peaks on their own. If a peak is missing or you want to add another one in there or uh, do something with it, if you select the range, right click inside, there's an add or edit peaks. You can go in here and you can now add a second peak to it. You can move it. You can do all sorts of things with it. So if it doesn't find the peaks, all you need to do is like there is a potentially a peak in here. You can go in here. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's go back and resume back in. And I said, I want to do, oh, let's do this one. Let's go here, select this range. I'm going to select this range in here, add or edit peak. I'm going to go in, drag another peak in here, and then say done. And what you can see is that now we have peak one, peak, or peak zero, peak one, peak two, peak three. We get four of those. Okay. So next, what we can do is, uh, we can go in here and we can, for example, do a fit. When you do a fit, it will fit the background parameters and for each peak, it will fit its parameters. You can look at that. In this case, we have a background is a constant. You have a few other choices. For example, we can make a linear one. We can also have a 
cubic and there's a polynomial of, of 10. Just, you know, something simpler should work. Linear is fine. In this case, you have choices of peak position, uh, peak profiles. For example, one Gaussian, it might actually be Hoyt. And let's see if that's going to fit it. No. Let's stick with the Gaussian. Okay. So now what we have is you can pick all, each one of these can be different as you wish. So now we have four peaks. Um, we can do now uh, fit those. Now, if you want to fit these, you can fit one at a time. In this GUI, that would be either hitting do fit here, which is what I have just done. If you are already at a good position, you get this is not processing, chances are this is a good fit, you just say OK. Uh, the same button is this one. They're blue for the reason this one does do MPF2, which is this tool here, fit. You can also go in and record the current result. When you do that, it will create multiple records. It will create this little table, and that will tell you what you are fitting, when, uh, what the data wave was, what the x wave was, what chi-square you achieved, how many points, and all sorts of other things in there, what the location, what the uncertainty of location is, um, and so on. So you can get all of those info, the, all of that information. This is a similar record, just in a different way formatted in here, and it gives you parameters for each peak individually, basically. So those are things which you can get. And then what it does, it also creates a folder. The folder name is Wax Fit Results. That's this one here, root Wax Fit Results. And inside it, you will find out there's a folder Fit with Results 1. Inside that folder, when you start, when you record it, the results from this PTAL23004, it will create a folder in there. And in that, you have lots of things which are in there. There's a peak zero, which gives you the peak profile. That's a D position, so that's its, its position as a D. These are the coefficients which you can open. So that basically, it copies as much information as it knows about this fit, about this fit, into that folder. Okay? Now, I'm going to take it and delete it, because we're going to recreate that now. The next step is we want to fit all of them. And to do that, we'll just click up here, hold down Shift, scroll down all the way in here, and select that. So now by selecting, and you can, you can for example, hold down Command or Control, and you can pick just some of them. Or you can click on the first one and roll down all the way down by holding shift and select all of them and you know there, there actually there are a few other modifiers which make it possible to select different things now interestingly if you don't want to do something uh, for example you have five different samples in there and you want to see only some of them so what you can do is you can go in and use this folder match regular expression field this place here to select part of the data, you know, only some. So let's say you would like only the ones which contain three zeros. There are three zeros ones. Let's do two zeros one zero. Oh. Why is it not working? Okay. Anyway. In this case, you can select a regular expression here. Let's leave it for now. But you can select a regular uh, expression, and that will mask off some of these. So, but let's go let's go forward with this for now. I'm gonna ignore that for now. Okay, so I'm gonna select all, and now I can go in and I can do a fit. To do a fit on all of these, I need to run this button here. This will do a fit and record the range of data selected here. So when I do this, it says, OK, I'm fine. And then it's going to swap the data. What it's doing is it's running it's it's running that multi-peak fit. And between each one of the scans, it simply swaps it in there. And so you can follow here in that corner, you can follow that it's changing the number of the scan which you are watching. So that's PT16, 17, 
18. And let's keep doing that. And it's making records in those, um, in those notebooks and in uh, that folder. And we have about 40 and a change, so that's going to take another about half a minute or so. Depending on how many peaks you have, it may take longer or shorter. Uh, that really depends on how fast your computer is and how complicated the fits are. There's also a little delay in there, so it doesn't run too fast for uh, plotting. Okay, so we finished on 43. So with that, if you go in and find these these um, two in files, you will, or, or documents, you will find out that this document has uh, information about the peaks. And this one here has every one of your peaks. So if you go through this, there's a first fit, second fit, and so on, it keeps going. This one is the current fit. Uh, this one contains all the fits which you had. Uh, these ones are useful, but not really easy to parse into a computer form. So I'm going to close them. And now I'm going to use this plot evaluate results. I'm going to click on that and start. Select the folder. Keep in mind, if you now want to run a different sample, all you need to do is change this into whatever makes sense to you. It has to be a meaningful name for a folder which suggests a single word, but and only, you know, in Igor 7, only 30 characters or so. But you can put in here, for example, sample 25 at 10 degrees or something, which makes sense, and run just a subset of these, and, and then you can analyze them. Now, out here, we can go and look at it and say, for example, let me just put the diffraction lines on this back. Okay, so this one, which is number one, is platinum 111. Okay, so if I go in here and select peak one, I'm now studying what happens with this 111 peak. And I can graph the above selected peak profiles. These are the profiles, these blue curves, which were fits to the data. It's also this red curve down here. These are those results saved for each one of your files. So in this case, 004 was actually room temperature. And then I was heating up and then cooling down. What you can see is I started at the despacing of whatever is here, basically 2.27. But then the despacing was going one way, and then actually it turns out it was going the other way. How do I know? Because I can actually graph the peak parameters. And here is a table of your results. These are angle, width of the peak, and height of the peak. Okay, so these are those. These ones I have to fix. They are not being pulled correctly. And that's on my to-do list. Um, out here, the most interesting one is this. This is your angle position that's equivalent to the D position here, except there's a wavelength change in here. What you can see is that we started here for the very first file, and then the angle was decreasing, which means the D spacing was increasing. We're going first with relatively large steps, and then we're going with the small steps. We reached the maximum temperature, and just we went back up. So you can see that this is basically the thermal expansion which we are studying. Out here, this is a width of the peak. So if you look on that, the peak position at the beginning was um, narrower and then got broader. I don't know why. And then here you have the area of the peak itself. Um, typically, that would be if you are watching a phase transition that would be either decrease or increase on the phase content or something. So these all numbers, all of this is pulled out of here from these fit results and you can basically trace it back to various of these waves inside here. They are hopefully meaningful, uh, meaningful uh, names so you can figure it all out and basically those are your results which now you have to somehow process in Igor or somewhere else as uh, for, for the real results in publication. You can, for example, select all of this table um, and then select it 
and you can do capital uh, the control copy no, you just do control copy or command copy and you paste it in Excel you can also go and save the table into a something else and uh, there's lots of ways of getting data in and out of Igor so you can do all sorts of things with that but what we have done is really we have obtained now the best possible fits as a as of your data uh, using this tool. So this is basically the whole description. Uh, hopefully this is good enough for you. Again, if you need help, you just hit this display help button and then you go to your web browser and you should find in your web browser uh, your uh, help which walks you through all of these things and explains everything. Um, and you can follow here, hopefully all of the details are in here. It shows you what happens, how, and so on. So with this, uh, thank you very much for attention. If you have any questions, well, uh, there's a manual. As you can see, there are these movies. And if you run into major troubles or anything else, you can always send me an email and I'll try to help you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Take care.